Hi, I'm Rob Schreiber. I'm co-teaching the Intro to MPI Programming class with Jack Paulson. In this jolt, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of computer architecture as seen by those who write code in MPI. To begin, let's talk about different kinds of parallel computers. A classical distinction or a taxonomy of parallel computers classifies them as MIMD, SIMD, or SPMD. SIMD stands for Single Instruction Multiple Data. In a SIMD machine, there's one program and one point of control in that program. All the processors in the parallel machine are at that same point in the, the one and only program at any time. But each processor works on its own data. Uh, a floating point add instruction, for example, causes every processor to add two numbers. This is a form of what's called data parallelism. MIMD, on the other hand, stands for multiple instruction, multiple data. In a MIMD machine, each processor runs its own program, has its own program counter, its own point of control. They operate independently of one another. They do communicate, if necessary, in MIMD machines, either by sharing data in memory or by sending messages. We'll talk more about message passing soon. SPMD stands for Single Program Multiple Data. It's really a form of MIMD. It's uh, a MIMD uh, approach, but in SPMD, one writes a single program, and then every processor runs its own copy of that program. But at that point, from, from the beginning, they're allowed to take independent branches and go in different ways, depending on different data that they may have. And one of the data that they have is to know the, the processor number that, that they uh, are running on. So uh, you can branch, for example, based on your processor ID. Let's talk more about the details of computer architecture from a very, very uh, high level. Uh, that what, what we need to understand uh, MPI programming. The uh, original machines had a single processor and a memory, and the processor processed data, which it fetched from memory and put back into memory. A vector machine, or a SIMD machine, uh, is really very similar except that when data are fetched from memory, multiple words of data are fetched at a time. And when operations are performed, multiple operations of the same kind are performed on multiple data, single instruction, multiple data. So for example, in a vector variant of a SIMD machine, the instructions talk about vectors of a certain finite length. You might load a, a, a 16 element vector from memory, or you might add to 16 element vectors that are stored in vector registers in the processor. MIMD machines, on the other hand, uh, unlike SIMD machines, are classified in, into two general classes. The shared memory multiprocessors, an approach that's called scale up, uh, have many processors that all communicate to one memory, and data can be transferred by storing it in that memory transferred from one processor to another by storing it in that memory where any of the processors can then load it. The conventional wisdom about shared memory multiprocessors is that these are, is that these are difficult and costly to build, but relatively easy to program. That is really an oversimplification, but uh, that was the view about them uh, traditionally. On the other hand, there are the distributed memory multiprocessors. These are also called multi-computers. A distributed memory multiprocessor is really just a collection of independent computers that share nothing. The term used generally to describe this is scale out rather than scale up. Because they share nothing, explicit messages are required to communicate between processors. The, the conventional wisdom is that these were easy to build but more difficult to program. Be that as it may, difficult though it may be, we're going to teach you how to do it using MPI in this class.
Here's a view, a schematic view of the shared memory multiprocessor. Multiple processors communicate, possibly via some kind of interconnection network, to a memory, but any processor can load or store any word in that memory. In reality, machines now uh, include data caches represented by C's here. Processors prefer to fetch data, load and store it, from caches. Caches are much faster than main memory. When a processor tries to access data that's not in the cache, a cache miss occurs, a request is routed through the network to the, to the actual memory, which then tries to satisfy that request, whether a load or a store. There may be a shared cache at the memory, uh, which is faster than the memory and smaller. And if the data is found there, good, it's returned fast. Uh, if it's not there, then uh, a miss in that cache occurs and the data comes from main memory. Distributed memory multicomputers date from roughly uh, the early 80s. The first was developed at Caltech uh, based on essentially the PC, and then multiple PCs were linked together in a network. So what you have is many simple machines, processor, perhaps a cache, and a private memory that only that processor can use, connected by a network over which messages can be sent between these uh, separate nodes, each of which is really a computer. For example, the nodes in a, a simple multi-computer each runs its own copy of the operating system. Newer distributed memory multi-computers follow the general idea of separate computers connected by a message passing network, but those individual computers are today based on multi-core processors which uh, have complicated memory hierarchies internal to themselves. And uh, the parallelism one can use involves parallelism both within the node, using the multiple cores of the multi-core node, and then many of those nodes in a multi-computer arrangement with a message passing network. What are supercomputers like today? The reason for us to learn MPI programming is to be able to deal with large-scale computation to challenge the difficult problems in computational science on large-scale machines, supercomputers. Today, essentially all supercomputers are multi-computers with complex multi-core nodes. Uh, in the picture is the Sequoia machine, an IBM machine at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Uh, you see many, many racks, each of which contains many, many multi-core nodes. The uh, yellow structures on top are for the cabling required to build the, the network. So, supercomputing today. These machines now, like the Sequoia machine, are capable of 10 petaflops, that's 10 to the 16th floating point operations per second. They have on the order of a petabyte, 10 to the 15th bytes of memory. They occupy tens of thousands of square feet in large data centers, composed of hundreds of racks of hardware. Networks are now uh, made with fiber technology. The heat density is so great that air is no longer able to remove the heat, and water cooling is becoming the general trend in these machines. To buy one costs a pretty penny. A hundred million dollars is the right order of magnitude, but I think the Sequoia and others are considerably beyond 100 million. They're used for the biggest problems we've got. The last uh, word I'd like to leave you with in this jolt is to realize that nearly all code on this and other supercomputers today is MPI code, and that's what we'll be teaching in this class.